I was expecting sandy beaches, seaside promenades and not much else. You know, the typical scene of a major summer holiday destination on the Spanish Costa del Sol. But my oh my, I was in for a treat. What a view! I'm Rock and these are the best things to do in Malaga, Spain. The city is nestled between the Mediterranean Sea and the mountains that stretch all the way to the Malaga's historic city center. Its slopes provide spectacular views of the ancient city and its modern port. So it's no wonder that these strategic slopes have been used throughout history to control the city. This fortification was built by the Moors, North African Muslims who occupied the Iberian Peninsula and Malaga in the 700s. The Moors turned the entire hill into a complex fortification and hence the palace was named al Kasaba, meaning castle or fort in Arabic. With its many gates and two walled enclosures, al Kasaba provided a total control of Malaga for the next 776 years. Well, there is a lot of time, and during this long period, the Alcazaba underwent several reconstructions. It evolved from a military stronghold to a palace fortress. Inside the inner enclosure at the top of the fortress, you can still see most of Moorish palace walls encircling three courtyards. But in the 1400s, Christian kingdoms organized a successful military camping against the Moors known as the Reconquista. Christian kings managed to recapture the Iberian Peninsula and Malaga was reconquered in 1487. A few centuries later, the Alcazaba lost its military function and was almost forgotten. It became a refuge for the poor who built their homes within its walls. In the 1930s, residents were evacuated and the restoration of the fortress began. The entrance to the Alcazaba is literally just few steps from the streets of the old town and is simply a must visit. The uphill path between beautiful Moorish walls take you through charming gates, beautiful gardens and courtyards, eventually ending with beautiful views. But even better views can be seen from the second castle located on even higher nearby hill. Gibralfaro is another historic military structure on strategic location overlooking Malaga. In the 1300s, the Alcazaba fortress and Gibralfaro castle were connected by a double wall, resulting in a mighty fortified complex. This impressive fortified complex was impregnable. However, in 1487, Spanish Catholic forces managed to defeat the Moors stationed inside this castle without breaking its defenses. The castle walls managed to withstand the attacks, despite this being the first military conflict where both sides used gunpowder. Unable to breach the defenses, Spanish Catholic forces surrounded the castle and waited for three months. Eventually, the Moors surrendered due to hunger. Spanish King Ferdinand occupied the castle, which served as a military base until 1925. You can walk around the ramparts to enjoy spectacular views, and in the former gunpowder arsenal, you'll find a small museum. To make the most of your visit, consider getting a combined ticket for Alcazaba and Gibralfaro Castle. Both attractions are connected by a lovely uphill footpath, offering spectacular views on the way. If you want to avoid the uphill walk, visit the castle first as it's accessible by city bus and taxi. Afterwards, you can enjoy a walk downhill towards the Alcazaba and the city center. Back in the city center, right under the Alcazaba fortress, is Malaga's oldest preserved monument, the Roman Theater. Even before the Romans, Malaga was already a well-known Mediterranean trading post. However, Roman rule brought economic and cultural prosperity, leading to the construction of the theater in the 1st century BC. Similar to other Roman theaters, the structure ingeniously utilized the natural slope of the hill. After being in use for 300 years, the theater fell into despair with the decline of the Roman Empire. If you thought you spotted a few Roman stones in the Alcazaba, you are right. With the Moorish conquest of Malaga, the stones from the abandoned theater came in very handy to build the fortress just a stone's throw away. Over time, the remains of the theater became buried, remaining hidden until the rediscovery in the 1950s. Access is through a modern visitor center and there is no entrance fee. The Roman theater marks the beginning 
think of Malaga's historic city center with a remarkable history. As one of the oldest cities in the world, it offers a fascinating blend of different styles and eras. So let me take you through the most popular and charming streets and squares of Malaga Old Town. Most of the Old Town is a pedestrian-only area and its numerous beautiful and charming streets are perfect for wandering around. They are lined with beautiful buildings from various architectural styles and at every step you can find restaurants, tapas bars and shops. But the most popular, elegant and expensive street in Malaga is Calle Larios. Adorned with beautiful neoclassical architecture, it boasts grand imposing houses occupied by well-known chain stores and various businesses establishing itself as the central shopping area of the city. This iconic street serves as a vital link connecting Malaga port with the heart of the historic city center, Plaza de Constitución, which has been the main square of Malaga and its bustling heart since the time of the Reconquista. And as you can see it, it is still used for various public events. Lined with beautiful houses that showcase various architectural styles, Square has hosted numerous significant events. Its cafes and terraces are perfect for people watching and this is a nerve center of the city connecting its most important streets. One of them is a popular Calle Granada, a lively hub of activity with a wide array of shops, boutiques and businesses. The street's name and history can be traced back to the ancient city walls and the gates that once led straight to the city of Granada. It connects Plaza de Constitución with one of the largest squares in Malaga, Plaza de la Merced, which once served as the town's marketplace. Now, filled with cafes and terraces, Plaza de la Merced is a vibrant space where, at its center, stands an obelisk, a monument commemorating General Torios and his men who fought and lost their lives in Spanish War of Independence against Napoleon Bonaparte. On one of the square's many benches, you'll find the most popular statue in Malaga, a slightly larger-than-life-size statue of Pablo Picasso. Although he spent the majority of his adult life in France, Picasso was born as the first child of his parents here in Malaga. If you look behind Picasso's left shoulder, you can see a yellow corner building, his birth house. Picasso spent his first 10 years in Malaga before his family moved due to his father's job. Now, Malaga boasts two main museums dedicated to the world-famous artist. The first is Picasso's birth house called Casa Natal de Picasso. It's cool to visit his birth house and all, but the museum itself is very modest. It shows few works by Pablo and his father, along with very few personal mementos of the Picasso family. But Picasso's second museum is very different and well worth the visit, as it is the most popular museum in Malaga. Museo Picasso so Malaga is housed in the splendid 16th century Buena Vista Palace and provides a chronological and thematic overview of the artist's career featuring approximately 250 works. Unfortunately, photography and filming are strictly prohibited within the museum. However, you are permitted to use your phone to access the official museum guide app providing an understanding of the artist's most important pieces. But the highlight of the old town is Malaga's cathedral with its charming small bishop square. After the reconquest of Malaga, the city's main mosque was replaced by this impressive cathedral. Construction began in the 1500s and lasted for over 200 years. The grand project involved the greatest masters of the Andalusian Renaissance. However, Due to the lack of funds, Spanish involvement during the American Revolutionary War and Napoleon's invasion, the construction was never fully completed. The cathedral is still missing one of its intended two bell towers, and that is why it was nicknamed La Manequita or One-Armed Lady. The cathedral boasts a very spacious and tall interior divided into three naves and adorned with walls while being surrounded by side chapels. An impressive array of religious art includes beautiful paintings and sculptures. The semicircular high altar, dating from the 1500s, is sheltered by a ribbed vault. In the center of the cathedral stands an impressive choir with beautiful baroque woodwork flanked by church organs on both sides. At the exit, there is also a small cathedral museum on the first floor, often missed by most people. But make sure you don't miss the opportunity to visit the cathedral's roof. To get up there, you must obtain a combined ticket that includes access to the roof and attend a guided tour that starts every full hour and lasts approximately 30 minutes. The climb evolves about 200 steps, but it's well worth the effort. Once you reach the top, you are greeted by absolutely spectacular views. You can 
can walk around the entire perimeter of the cathedral, and besides the breathtaking view, you can also admire the roof's unusual architecture as it is made up of a series of small domes. By now you must be starving! Fortunately, Malaga is an exceptional destination for food and wine as it is one of the world's oldest wine regions, producing world's best sweet wines. No wonder its historic city center is dotted with remarkable bodegas or wine cellar bars. This one doesn't look like much on the outside, but it's a must-visit experience as it is the oldest and most authentic in Malaga. Antigua Casa de Guardia still remains its simple original decor, customs and ambience. In this old-school bar, wine is poured directly from aged barrels and bills are inscribed in chalk on the bar counter. Stack old barrels, one atop the other, house an array of sweet and dry wines along with the popular vermouths and liqueurs. World-famous sweet liqueur wines are crafted from local grape variety known as Pedro Jimenez. They are enriched with brandy and aged in large oak barrels, contributing to their distinct and rich flavors. Salute! But even more famous and popular bodega is El Pimpi. Antonia Banderas, Malaga native, is one of its owners. This is a much larger wine bar with different rooms, corridors and courtyards. Some of the barrels are autographed by celebrities who have visited this place. Walls are decorated with the traditional bullfighting posters and an array of photos showcasing the most distinguished visitors. Naturally, you should also consider some food to go along, as this bodega is also among the best tapas bars in Malaga. Talking about tapas, no trip to Malaga would be complete without a stop at La Tranca. This is the very typical Malaga tapas bar with a wooden bar, tiled walls, playing beautiful old Spanish songs. This old school place gets very busy in the late afternoon and evening, but if you beat the crowds, you can grab a seat at the bar where you should order a glass of vermouth, a fortified wine flavored with a variety of herbs and spices. La Tranca's most delicious tapas are the croquettes de jamón. They are absolutely fabulous and pair perfectly with vermouth. Salute! Another great place to discover Andalusian gastronomy is the Central Food Market. Beautiful iron building has monumental entrance adorned with stained glass windows depicting ships, a testament to its original purpose as a Moorish shipyard. No wonder that the market's name, Atarasanas, means shipyard in Arabic. A stroll through this exquisite food market is a must, as locals flock here daily to buy fresh fruits, vegetables, seafood, meats and local delicacies. The market has three sections, with the seafood section clearly standing out as the most important, occupying the central area with the main entrance. It's remarkable how diverse and rich the seafood section is. To the left and right of the seafood section, you'll find areas dedicated to meat and vegetables. At the south entrance of the market is a highly popular Mercado Bar, offering delightful tapas prepared using fresh ingredients sourced from the market itself. You'll have to squeeze among the locals to taste delicacies like skewers of prawns and the delicious fried white anchovy known as Boquerenos Fritos. After indulging in all the delicious food, you might consider diving deeper into the history of Malaga by stopping between the Alcazaba and the port at the Malaga Museum, the largest state museum in the region. It is housed in a beautiful neoclassical palace from the early 1800s, one of the most emblematic buildings in the city. The palace was built and originally used as a custom house for Malaga port. Now it houses a museum that combines fine arts and archaeology spread across two floors in eight vast rooms. On the second floor, dedicated to archaeology, you can find five rooms with pieces unearthed at different places in Malaga province. They offer a glimpse into the diverse history of Malaga. Here you can see artifacts from prehistoric times, pieces from the Phoenicians that include an extraordinary Corinthian-style helmet from the 600 BC, Roman sculptures, Roman marble and Moorish remains. The first floor is dedicated to fine arts. It starts with religious paintings and artifacts, leading to beautiful pieces by key Spanish artists, mostly from the 19th and 20th centuries. On the ground floor you can find temporary exhibitions, and if you're lucky enough, you might even see a Picasso exhibition. The museum is well worth the stop, as the entrance is free of charge for EU citizens and costs just 1.5 euros for others. 
Finally, we arrive at Malaga's beaches. A mere 10 minute stroll from the old city center brings us to one of Spain's most popular beaches, named after its neighborhood Malagueta, originally inhabited by fishermen. However, in the 19th century, this once quiet and modest fisherman's neighborhood underwent a dramatic transformation. Sugar factories, warehouses, shipyards and wine cellars rapidly occupied the serene coastal area. In the 1950s, another dramatic shift unfolded. Similar to the transformation of the entire Costa del Sol, Malaga underwent a significant change, evolving into a thriving coastal holiday destination. Neighborhoods' industrial buildings were demolished to pave the way for tourist infrastructure and creation of Malagueta Beach. Most popular urban beach stretches for 1.2 kilometers or 0.8 miles and boast a wide expanse of fine sand. The beach has been honored with a blue flag, serving as international symbol of safety, cleanliness and sustainability. Alongside numerous amenities, the beach provides free showers and toilets, as well as green areas of grass shaded with palms. A long and beautiful palm line promenade separates the beach from high-rise buildings. During the mornings and evenings, the promenade is a popular spot for joggers, cyclists or walkers who enjoy its magnificent atmosphere. On Malaga beaches, you can find famous beach bars known as chiringuitos. Besides the refreshments, they also serve fresh local seafood. A must-try is the typical dish of Malaga cuisine, spit-roasted sardines. The tradition of grilling sardines dates back to the time when fishermen would skewer and grill fish in small boats on the sand. The modern way typically involves placing six sardines on a skewer, seasoning them with sea salt and then grilling them over the open flames of an olive wood fire. Once the sardines are fully cooked and achieve a golden exterior, they are drizzled with olive oil and lemon juice. It's widely believed that the sardines are at their best from May to August when they are a bit fattier, enhancing their flavor. To the west of Malagueta Beach is a Malaga port marked by a large lighthouse. This once industrial port has been transformed into a modern, multi-purpose space offering a strong contrast to the historic city center. At the end of the 20th century, the port of Malaga experienced an important turning point when it ceased to receive its main traffic, crude oil. Consequently, the port had to reinvent itself, giving rise to a modern shopping and cultural area known as Muelle Uno or Pier 1. This vibrant space with a seaside promenade is lined with restaurants, boutique stores and shops featuring international brands and local crafts. Within the iconic, multicolored cube stands the Pompidou Center, showcasing cutting-edge modern art in all its forms. The revitalized port continues with its second pier, Muelle Dos, distinguished by an impressive and iconic modern white structure called the pergola resembling waves. This waterfront recreational and leisure area is always bustling with pedestrians browsing through stalls. To help you venture beyond the beautiful beaches of Malaga, check the QR code or description below where you'll find my favorite tours and experiences that are sure to surprise you. My name is Rock, thanks for the thumbs up and for watching and see you next time.